Hello, this is Ron Paul with your weekly update for Monday, November 15th. What do the Federal Reserve and neoconservatives have in common? They both refuse to admit that their policies, the neocons' promotion of perpetual war and the Fed's manipulation of the money supply, are complete failures having produced the opposite of the promised results. The latest example of the Federal Reserve engaging in Bill Crystal's like levels denial is the Fed's continued insistence that the return of the 70s style inflation is a transitory phenomenon resulting from the end of the lockdowns. The Fed has acknowledged the transitory inflation will last until at least 2022, yet it is still determined to keep interest rates at or near zero until the jobs situation improves. To be fair, the Fed has finally announced plans to cut back on its money printing activities by reducing by $15 billion a month its monthly purchase of $80 billion of Treasury bonds and $40 billion of mortgage-backed securities. It is unlikely that the Fed will stick to its plans to taper its purchase of Treasury bonds. The Fed's Treasury bond purchases enable the federal government to run up the debt without inter increasing taxes or paying, punishing highly high interest rates on the debt. The Congressional Budget Office projects that by 2030, the federal debt increased interest rates will more than double to $829 billion. That is more than the government spent on the military in 2020. Despite the looming fiscal crisis, Congress is unlikely to cut spending anytime soon. Instead, Congress members are debating a $1.75 trillion social spending plan, having just passed a $1.2 trillion infrastructure bill. Contrary to the claims of President Biden and his allies, this new spending will not reduce inflation. What it will do is hasten and depend the inevitable economic crisis caused by government overspending. Of course, most Republicans will continue to oppose big increases in spending and debt, as long as Democrats sit in the Oval Office. A Republican who becomes president will likely believe, as Dick Cheney has said, that President Reagan taught us that deficits don't matter. The difference between the parties is Republicans are less likely to raise taxes. So no matter who controls Congress and the presidency, spending and debt can keep increasing. Thanks for calling.